And Luke, uh, in the genealogy there in Luke 3, tells us that Adam was the son of God. Uh, when we look at it in that respect, God always wanted sons. Mm-hmm. You know, the first Adam was the son. He sent his son, Jesus, who was his son. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, what we what we have to, what God's bringing us to is the concept of being sons. What we functioned at before was to be an orphan. Mm. An orphan will hoard. An orphan will put his trust in money, bling, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, in, when in effect, what God wants us to do is to be his sons. Right. That's where our treasure needs to be. Mm-hmm. We can't serve we can't serve money and God. Yeah, that's a good point, John. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I was thinking about when you and both Wilbur was discussing this concept of how to invest our money and making sure that we are investing our money properly as good stewards. Mm-hmm. One of the things I was hearing, especially um, Wilbur, when you were just talking earlier about the thief, mm-hmm. is that when I think of a thief, I think of a thief as someone who comes and he catches. Um, be off guard. Mm-hmm. You know, he catches me off guard because I was not ready for him. But when you think about now that some of these faces are being put to, like with this incident you mentioned as far as the gentleman who had this Ponzi scheme who ran off with millions of dollars for other, from other people, don't you think those people are, have, a, have a degree of responsibility as well because they were vulnerable when they invested in uh, something they thought, you know, was a good investment? You know, in other words, I guess my, my question is, as a Christian, you know, what do you consider good investments? Now good, good investments are in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Good investments are in God's people. You know, uh, that's, the, that's the things that, that I see that are important. Um, rather than, even rather than church buildings, mm-hmm. which are, you know... Uh, somewhat necessary but uh you know to to be able to invest in god's people and in the things that god is doing is much more valuable i think that um, if we can invest in the younger generation Mm. the people coming up i mean my whole heart is to see the younger ones go well beyond me in 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 my walk with the lord i want to see them fulfill the destiny that they've had that, uh, that God has given them, and I don't want to stand in their way at all. And if I, if there's any way that I can help them, even financially, uh, I want to do that. So that, to me, is a good investment. Hmm. And, 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 and I agree uh, wholeheartedly uh, with John. And, but, and one of the things that, that I also would like to, to put out there is that God has not a problem with us achieving levels of prosperity and and wealth. But the the focus has to be for the kingdom. Mm. It has to be, as John said, being able to to help uh, other people grow into their destiny. It has to be to advance uh, uh, the kingdom. It cannot be, as John said earlier, about hoarding. It cannot be uh, about greed. And I'll say it this way again. Greed makes you vulnerable. Even it's growing good. up as a young person, uh, I, I didn't come from some of the better neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And so you were exposed to all kinds of people. And I knew people who were, were con men. Their, 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 their goal was to separate you from your money. Mm. And one of the things they would always say, if you listen to my story, I got you. If you will listen to the story, I have you. Because the story I'm going to weave for you will feed into the greed that you already have. And so it makes you vulnerable. You'll throw reason out the window. Mm -hmm. You'll, 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 You'll throw sound principles out the door. Because now you've become vulnerable because you've become greedy. Right. And that's basically what has happened in our whole, in our economy. 
whether it be with the Ponzi schemes, whether it be with with oil, whether it be, be with anything that, that in those areas, we, we became greedy, and so it made us vulnerable. Hmm. And so uh, what, uh, what the Bible tells us, again, is first of all, to seek after money with all your energy and all your heart and all your ability is wrong. You begin to worship the money. Hmm. And that's what happens, is, and, and that causes you to be, a, to, to be willing to compromise on almost every area of your life. <laughs> True. And so, you know, and so those are the kind of things that set us up. When you say we, had, we have a responsibility, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and very much so, right. very much so. And yeah. I don't believe that what is being said uh, here is saying that we shouldn't be diligent, we shouldn't uh, uh, seek to increase. You know, even, even, even Jesus said that when he, uh, in the parable, when the talents were given to the servants, they were supposed to increase. But with the goal that they were increasing for the benefit of their master and his household, right. not for their own greed. Right. So it, 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 it boils down to a lot about what is, the, what is the perspective that you're going to have and never have the mentality that you're willing, willing to sacrifice everything on the altar of getting money. Right. I think, John, um, in response to something you said earlier, I think John sort of hit the nail on the head when you talked about the greatest investment is the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I strongly believe that that is the kingdom principle. Mm-hmm. You know, when mm-hmm. somebody's dying, they don't ask you to bring me my keys to my Mercedes. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, they don't ask you to bring me my checkbook and make sure my balance is correct. Mm-hmm. When somebody's on a deathbed, they ask for, where's my daughter? Where's my son? You know, what's most important to them? And that is relationships, people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that during these times, you're talking about looking at an economy from God's perspective. During these times, if you are a company or if you own a business, if your top priority is not making sure that the people are cared for, yes, mm-hmm. even if it means you losing you know, to some degree, I believe that, you know, it, it will produce failure. Because these are the thing, type of things that God is getting us back to. Mm-hmm. You know, what's most important? Mm-hmm. Our foundations have been discovered. Mm-hmm. And the Lord's getting us back to what's most important. Mm-hmm. And that is people. And why we do need structures and buildings to meet in. You know, to me, one of the, most, the biggest building funds is building up the younger generation to mm-hmm. come into, like you said, work of their destiny. Mm-hmm. That's so, so important. Mm-hmm. How about, I, I wanted to ask you guys, how about, let's say, for instance, you have a bunch of Christians who, um, let's say, for instance, probably have a household income of 70000 a year. And they moved in the $500,000 home. And now, you know, you're seeing foreclosures, and not only with people who aren't Christians, but with Christians, we're seeing foreclosures and so on. But when they originally got the house, you know, it's it was the Lord. You know, God told me, and God showed me this is mine. But then um, you come to a point where it's not affordable anymore, and just as anyone else, you sort of just see a dark spiral where things begin to go down. I guess my question is this. Do you believe, whether Christian or non-Christian, that society as a whole have placed so much emphasis on materialism that have pulled people to, to work beyond their means of living? And as a result, people have become not enslaved to money, but self-seeking and self-serving as a result of that. That's why they don't have any t- time to do anything else but work. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that's been a trend. You know, even in the last few years, even the, the new homes that are built, for example, mm-hmm. uh, you know, are big um, and, uh, you know, expensive. And, and, and nothing wrong with having a big house, uh, and absolutely nothing. But, uh, you know, people that haven't been able to afford it have bought these houses, and now they can't maintain it. Uh, you know, when we were talking before, one of the things that I'd advise anybody, Christian or non-Christian, get out of debt. 
sacrifice to get out of debt. Mm. You know, there's, it's a wonderful place to be. We can't live on credit. And that's, just, you know, that's one of the things that this country has done forever. We've lived on credit. 